This is Geometry A, Unit 6, Congruent Triangles, Lesson 6, Congruence in Right Triangles. So we're going to de deal specifically with right triangles now. You may, let me, let me take a little moment to review the triangle congruence postulates that we've done so far. They are side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. If you're keeping track of, of three-letter combinations, there's at least a couple that have been avoided. Angle, angle, angle. It's simply the fact that if all the angles are congruent, that's not enough to prove the triangles are congruent. They can be different sizes. There is an angle, angle similarity theorem that we'll get to next semester. And the other one is angle, side, side, or side, side, angle. Okay? And that one is missing as well. And it's missing for a reason that I'll show you here in just a moment. Well, one thing I want you to remember, that, or a trick you can use to remember that it doesn't work, is it spells a bad word. All right. A donkey, right? <laughs> ASS is not a, not a triangle congruence postulate or side-side angle in reverse order. <clears throat> Let me demonstrate why. Let's say I've got two triangles. Uh, I've got a triangle who's, that's got one side this long, okay, and let's, let's do it here, so this is two, four, six, eight, okay, and <clears throat> I've got another side that is six long, so I'm going to go six like this here, two, four, six, okay, <clears throat> And we're going to go up to this point right here. Okay. All right. So eight, eight, and uh, actually, let's let's do. We're, we need side. We need angle, side, side, right? So <clears throat> we've got an angle. Let's say this is our angle, kind of a slope of one half here. Okay, so we've got an angle right here, okay, and I drew this wrong here. We don't know the length of this side, but we've got an angle, <clears throat> and we've got a side that is a, a set length. Let's, let's make this side 8. Okay, so right to here, there we go, okay, so 8, so that, that side is 8 units long. So this angle and this side, and then let's make this other side uh, 5 units long. <laughs> And that was 8, so I need to label it 8. 8 and 5. Okay, so we have an angle and a <coughs> side that's 8 units long and a side that's 5 units long. So let's measure it off at 5. So 2, 4, 5. Right about there. Okay, now here's the problem. We could put it down here or we could put it over here. Okay. And so it is ambiguous. In, in, in other words, there are two places I can put the third vertex. I can put it way out here making an obtuse triangle or an obtuse triangle here. Or I can put it inside. I can put it right here. Well, come on. Right here. I'll do this with a dashed line. <coughs> or I can put it right here. Both segments are five units long, okay? But they don't make congruent triangles, okay? The triangle in, here in yellow is not the same as the triangle here in pink. They are not congruent. And so that would be an example of angle side side, right? Where the angle is the same, 
and then two consecutive sides are the same. But what if I what if I back up and instead of making this five units long, I make this I make this four units long instead. Okay, in other words, I make it just long enough to reach straight down right there. Then, and only then, it'll touch just once. Okay? And this is a special case of angle side side. So this is about four. Okay? <clears throat> and that's only when we have a right triangle. So a little bit of vocabulary. In a right triangle, now don't get this mixed up with the isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle, we have two congruent sides. This is called a leg. This is called a leg. This is called a vertex angle. This is called a base. This is called, a, these are called base angles. Okay. In this case here, we have a hypotenuse, hypotenuse. That's the long diagonal across from the 90, the 90 degree angle. And we've got two legs, a short leg and a long leg in this case. Okay. The legs touch the right angle, the hypotenuse does not. Okay, and so here is the, our fifth and final triangle congruence postulate theorem. It's hypotenuse leg. If you have a right triangle, so it's got to have a confirmed 90 degree angle, and the hypotenuse is the same in both triangles, and the leg is the same in both triangles. One leg is the same in both triangles. In that case, then the tri triangles are congruent. It's, the, it's kind of a special case of angle side side. All right, so that said, let's do a proof using hypotenuse leg. <clears throat> okay. And we can prove, actually, the isosceles triangle theorem using it. Okay, so here we go. Let's do this and this. Okay. And so now, instead of uh, the last time I proved this, I made all the sides the same. We're going to make something else the same. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do, here we go. Boom. All right, here we go. Okay. And we're going to draw this line. We're going to draw this line this time so that it makes a 90 degree angle. And it's going to necessarily make two 90 degree angles. Okay. But we're given this as an isosceles triangle, so these are the same. So A, B, C, D. Okay? And we're going to prove the angles are congruent. So given, given uh, AB is congruent to CB. Okay? And given uh, angle. AVD, or actually we get we give yeah we're given we're given AC is congruent is perpendicular perpendicular to BD. We're going to prove we're going to prove angle A is congruent to angle C. Okay, so statements and rules. Statement one, start with the given. AB is congruent to CB. And AC is perpendicular to BD. How do we know that's true? The only time we can assume in a proof it's given. Last statement, angle A is congruent to angle C. I don't know what goes in between. I do happen to know we're going to use corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Okay, so let's go. Do we see any bow ties or uh, Siamese twins? We do see a Siamese twin in that BD is congruent to itself. So BD is congruent to BD since corresponding part, no, not corresponding parts, I'm getting ahead of myself. Reflexive property. Reflexive property. Of congruence. 
Okay. All right. So we've got what have we got? We've got a side, a side, and we don't have the angle yet. But there is no angle side side. But we're going to use hypotenuse leg anyway. We need an angle. We need to prove the these are right triangles. Okay. So step three. Step three. Angle B D A. The measure of angle B D A or angle B D A and angle uh, B D C are right angles. How do we know they're right angles? Well, they're perpendicular. The lines are perpendicular. So the definition of perpendicular. Perpendicular means, perpendicular means 90 degrees or right angle. Okay, so that's the definition of perpendicular. So those are right triangles. So, so we could add another step if we wanted to so say triangle ABD and triangle uh, CBD are right triangles. How do we know they're right triangles? So they have a right angle. Okay, so definition of right triangle. Okay, and now step five, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. How are they congruent? They have a hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the long diagonal. And they have a leg that are congruent. Here's the leg. BD is congruent to BD. Here's the hypotenuse. Okay. Hypotenuse and leg, and it's a right triangle, so hypotenuse leg applies. So hypotenuse leg. Now that they are congruent, we can go and make our last statement. Six, angle A is congruent to angle C, since corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Quad erat demonstrandum. Okay, all right, so that's it.